Welcome back to the Hyperbolic Suffering Chamber. We are back once again. I don't know who I am, where I am, or what day it is. I'm being held captive against my will, and I need help. <laughs> but we're back again with more comments. We have Stop Plus. Delusion is keeping me alive. No cap. No frap. True. Yeah, I think the delusion of daily lead code hopefully will propel us deeper and deeper into the future so that maybe we may, we may meet the lead code gods and hopefully uh, be like them. We have a comment from Yasir Gauti. Did you ever take a look on W3 school exercises? I just tried them and there's some hard problems actually, at least for me. I think, I think there are actually some really hard problems on there. I used to use W3 School uh, a lot, actually, and it was actually really difficult. They got a lot going on there. There's also a lot of good resources, so it could be the wave. It could indeed be the wave. I've also been thinking that the current keyboard I'm using is just not optimal for the, the TPS, which is types per second or keys per second. So looking into some new keyboards to cop let me know if you have some ideal keyboards down in the comments below or what your preferred cherry mx or cherry switch is or just regular switch i'm pretty sure i run some old keyboards i run some pretty old keyboards this is a sig mini touch plus it's kind of a banger it doesn't work though so i need to find a way to make it work so i'd be interested in knowing about that but one thing I wouldn't be interested in knowing more about is lead code. So we are back once again with more lead code to be done. The problems on this website torment me, and we are still working on a solution to this problem called Find Pivot Index. Although the last few days we've been aiming for a shorter session, I'm hoping we can get back to the regular schedule soon and make more consistent progress. But that being said, the goal is a little bit every day. A little bit further every day maybe we shall see the light <clears throat> so we're gonna jump straight into fine pivot index and yeah it'll just be another day of leak code <clears throat> so where did we leave off with this problem we we're trying to find the pivot index given an array of integers nums calculate the pivot index of this array the pivot index is the index where the sum of all the numbers strictly to the left of the index is equal to the sum of all the numbers strictly to the index's right. Now what they're not saying is that this actually can exclude all the numbers to the right. If the index is on the left edge of the array, then the left sum is zero because there are no elements to the left. This also applies to the right edge of the array. Return the leftmost pivot index. If no such index exists, return negative one. So here we have this array of numbers here, and we're looking for the pivot index. Pivot index is index three, zero, one, two, three. Because if we do one, seven, and three together, we get 11, and five plus six gives us 11. Here there's no pivot index such that the sum on the left and right hand sides is the same. And then here we can do the left index of zero, excluding index zero, and then taking just these two indexes. So one thing to note is that the pivot index is ex the, the array sum excludes the pivot index. So we had an algorithm going here. It's unclear the logic that was driving this algorithm and we can decode some of the madness that remains. We have let i equal zero, i is less than num sub length. So we're iterating over i c. So we had the left sum, which was equal to num sub zero, and then we had a right sum, which was equal to i, num sub i plus one, which actually doesn't make, ah, right, which actually can make sense because i is actually the pivot index. It might make more sense if we were to name i that. So let's rename these and see if we can make some sense of this. So here we have some matching here. Uh, 
on. So now we're iterating, right? We're iterating through the array with each index actually being the pivot, which is why our right sum starts at pivot plus one and why left sum actually should start at zero. So if we look at our first start, uh, let's look at something simple here like this. Our left sum would be equal to zero, pivot would be equal to zero, and our right sum would be equal to pivot plus one, which would be two, which makes sense. Then we're gonna iterate from pivot plus one up until the end of the array and do uh, I guess we keep adding the numbers to see if the pivots make sense. Right now, our right sum is equal to one. We're going to iterate uh, starting at index one. I mean, the value index one here or index two in the array. Right. We're going to go through and we're going to say, OK, right sum is pivot equal to num is pivot the last element in the index. It's not. So we're going to do right sum plus equal nums to the m plus one. Problem that happens is we actually end up with a value of two. So right sum should also equal two. The issue though is that left sum and right sum end up equaling each other. So we can actually fix this, I think, by doing pivot m pivot plus two. So we get the pivot value, right? A pivot plus one, which is equal to one. And then m will equal pivot plus two to start here. And we're just gonna check, right? If left sum equals right sum, right, then return the pivot. It doesn't because zero does not equal one. So then we do right sum is equal to, if pivot is the last, if we're in the last index, Actually, this whole thing is simpler if we just remove all this here and just always add. And then if pivot is equal to nums.length minus one, we'll actually set it equal to zero. Otherwise, we'll just set it to pivot plus one. This way, right sum will start at the value. Uh, with index one, and then we're gonna start with m equal pivot plus two. So we're gonna be at index two, two is less than three. So we're gonna say if left sum equals right sum, return pivot. And zero does not equal one. And then we're gonna say right sum is equal to right sum plus equal num sub m plus one. So now on the next iteration, it should return, but it won't. This is because this needs to be less than or equal to, this whole thing is a mess. Maybe our algorithm is just very, very slow, but that took a very long time.
Something about this method just seems very ghetto. Our output was one, the expected negative one, so there should be no pivot index where it's the same. I don't think we should be taking this this long. I think we can do an n squared solution if we just rip out this for loop and just create a process process sum function. And I think that might be a better way to go because I don't uh, this index here we're in this for loops we're having like values and it's too many branches to follow. I think we just need something like this. We'll say, uh, we'll process the sum. So we'll start at, let's say, a value at a pivot index, and then try and find if the sums can be the same. What we'll say is, if right process sum for nums, right? We'll pass in pivot, and we'll also pass in the left sum. and write some starting values. Actually, we won't need to, we'll just have it abstracted away as an implementation detail. If process sum, we'll say process pivot is true, then we'll return pivot. Then we can create a function called process pivot, which is going to take an array of numbers which is going to be a pivot and a number. And it's going to return a Boolean. From here, what we're going to do is just take the pivot, right? And what we're going to say is, uh, we're gonna have a left sum, right? And a right sum. Now the right sum's value is initialized. It's gonna be different depending on uh, the index passed into or the pivot passed into the number, pivot passed into the function, right? And so for left sum, right, if pivot equals zero, it's gonna get the value of zero. Otherwise, uh, left sum is gonna get the value of nums of pivot minus one. And we can assume the pivot will always be within nums because of the for loop. We'll copy this for right sum. And if pivot is equal to nums.length minus one, then we'll set right sum equal to zero. And otherwise, we'll set right sum equal to pivot minus one as well. No, it would actually be pivot plus one. Because given a pivot like two, right, our starting value is going to be three and one, respectively. Now we want to say while left sum does not equal right sum and We'll say 
let index, which is just going to start and try to go to the end of the array, but we'll mirror it. Uh, index is going to start, actually we'll just use pivot and pivot is less than nums.length. We'll return false by default. And if left sum and right sum ever equal true, then we'll return, ever, ever equal each other, then we'll return uh, that their sums are the same. So if their sums are gonna start in the center, let's just say we call process pivot at two, uh, left sum is going to start with the value of sum sub pivot minus one, which would be one, and right sum would get the value of num sub pivot plus one, which would be three. Now we're going to check if left sum equals right sum. If they do, in fact, we'll shorten this line into one line and we'll just return true. Otherwise, we're going to want to do pivot plus equal one, and then left sum plus equal the offset. So we need, for example, pivot's gonna be two, we're gonna increment it, it's gonna be three, which means that we wanna add, let's just say there's another array, an extra M members in the array here, outside of the array. We wanna be able to add one, or if there's another number here and here, outside, well, pretty much we wanna use one index, right, which is pivot, iterate to the end of the array, we can reflect it over the other half. So let's see if that makes sense. If we had this for our pivot, we have five. We want to, let's just say we had six actually. We have six as our pivot. We want to add five to the right sum. How can we do that? We can just do pivot plus one and add five, but now we want to add three. How do we add three? Interesting, it might just be easier to have two separate indexes. So we got a right index and a left index. Then we can do left index minus equal one and right index plus equal one. Then we can do left sum plus equal nums sub left index, right or zero. But actually this is expanding one at a time. I think in this one, they want us to have the entirety of the sum up until that, po uh, up until that point. So you know what, it actually might make more sense to pass in left sum as a running total that we receive into this function When we first start, we'll pass in left sum, which is equal to zero, and the pivot will actually be index zero. Afterwards, we'll do left sum plus equal nums sub pivot, and then we'll keep going. So in this way, they want the leftmost pivot. We'll start with zero. The pivot's going to be index zero, which means we're pretty much going to add numbers until the number equals the right sum. So we can pretty just do let i equals pivot plus one, i is less than nums.length, i plus plus. Oh, 
otherwise it's equal to number of pivot plus one so it'll be equal to uh, seven to start which is fine and then we can actually just keep that bit we had earlier if left sum equals right sum return true and then we'll do right sum plus equal num sub i Wait, this should. So let's run this. We start with i, right? Process pivot, nums pivot is equal. Pivot is equal to zero. Pass in left sum, which is zero, because our pivot is going to start at index one. So left sum is zero. Right sum is going to be equal to zero because pivot does not equal nums at length minus one. So it's going to right sum is going to start at nums sub pivot plus one, which is equal to seven. Is zero equal to seven? It's not. So we do write sum plus equal dumb sub i. We ended up with the same loop. The problem with this loop is that you could still end with the sum afterwards. I'm, I don't understand I is equal pivot plus two. Here we have 11, and then we just have 5. I feel like we're just starting off by one for some reason. There's no value we can start right sum at that's not three because otherwise the whole thing falls apart. Or, I mean, seven. So if we started at value seven, that means the loop has to start. Pivot plus one, you start the value then the values are off because you end up adding them twice.
Maybe you could just put this before it. No, that doesn't make any sense either. Maybe the other thing you can do is just add a case at the end and just check if You end it with the same case we had before, except negative one fails. Nums, pivot, and left sum. One, negative two, negative three, negative four. My thing is, why does left sum equal zero here? Oh, this would be true because we add negative one one and then add the other negative one on the outside. Maybe, we, maybe the solution example is just unlucky. Oh no, we've been going first one through. I think we should just go, we'll do if left sum equals right sum and i is less than nums.length. Or I think we might have overcomplicated this whole question. I'm pretty sure left sum. We can return true. We can paste this afterwards and just calculate right sum starting at nums starting at right sum equals zero from here we can just start pivot plus equal one and just do right sum plus num sub equal i and then we can just return Oh man, I think I overcomplicated this problem. Yeah, we overcomplicated this problem very, very badly. Yeah, that was my bad, but we'll wrap it up there.